in Las Vegas in our first game of the night. UNLV was down 22. Time running out. Shane Noel up three to tie it. And into overtime we went. That's when Boise State and Najee Smith took over. And the Broncos, the two seeds, survive. On to our last game. Watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. And if you've been watching today in Las Vegas, what a ride it's been. Final game of the night. Six seed New Mexico, three seed Utah State. Two of the best offenses in this league. Bracket me. Wow. Nail biter for San Diego State. Overtime for San Jose State. Overtime for Boise State. And we arrive here at this one. Rich Waltz along with Gonzaga All-American. Dan Dickow, A.J. Ross has been with us all day. Last four in. That's where Jerry Palm has Utah State. they got to win this game, though, if they want to stay in that NCAA tournament. You know, I think they're last four in because they don't have the amount of marquee wins that a lot of the committee looks at. But they are a darn good basketball team. They've got another opportunity for a great win tonight. All right. They have a terrific guard. We're going to see three of the best guards in the Mountain West tonight. We start with Utah State's Stephen Ashworth. Well, Stephen Ashworth came off the bench as a spark for Buck a season ago. This year, he's looked at to do everything, point guard duties, as well as continue to find opportunities to shoot it. He's one of the best catch-and-shoot players across the country, but he's just one of many options. Yeah, 11 teams in the country have five guys in double figures. Utah State is one of those. Richard Bettino in New Mexico have a path to the NCAA tournament. They're 50 in the net. They win this game and then beat Boise State. They could be in, and they have a dynamite backcourt. And we start with a mid-range demon in Jamal Mashburn Jr. Well, Ashworth is tremendous from the three-point line. Mashburn is equally as good in that mid-range game. He does it because he's so crafty and he's unbelievably skilled getting to his spots. Almost 20, po 20 points per game on the season. Utah State's going to have to do a great job on him, and it's tougher to do it than it sounds. And his running buddy is darn good as well, and it seems like Jalen House is healthy now. He has battled injuries through the mid part of the year, but when he's right, he is a game changer. Part of the reason New Mexico got off to a 14-0 start to begin the season. Three games already, three nail biters, two overtimes, and this one could end in the 90s. New Mexico and Utah State. That is really going. A lot of folks from Albuquerque and New Mexico, a lot of folks from Logan and Utah State. A.J. Ross on the floor. A.J.? Brian Odom told me this Utah State team is battle-tested, and their confidence coming into this Mountain West tournament is right where it needs to be, especially coming off a win over Boise State to close out their regular season. He said it's tough wins like that that taught these Aggies how to deal with adversity and how they should not play with the fear of losing. Now with their destiny in their hands, a win over New Mexico tonight could go a long way toward eliminating any bubble projections, guys. <laughs> Amen to that. It ain't going to be easy. This is a really good New Mexico team. Kubota brings you the starting lineups. Josiah Alec and Morris Udeze. We didn't even mention these two. They've really helped in the low post. And Max Shulga has become a, a complete player for Ryan Odom in Utah State. Keep an eye on that. Junior from Ukraine. Richard Patino, just his second year. I mean, a huge jump. They've jumped 245 spots in the ratings from last year to this year. That's an enormous jump. Absolutely unbelievable what he's done. And for the Mountain West, that's great because traditionally they are one of the best programs in this league. San Jose State, a similar jump last year to this. And lo and behold, they're in the semifinals as well. As AJ mentioned, when Utah State has had to win, they've done it. Steven Ashworth is on a great ride in his last five games. 
And the Yankees have won all five of those games. And the biggest one was that 13 point win against Boise State. Two high scoring teams as well. New Mexico leads the Mountain West 81 again. Utah State at 79. They both like to get up and down. And here we go. Two teams that focus on different things on the offensive end of the floor. They do want to score a lot, but Utah State will rely on the three-point shot quite a bit, where New Mexico really puts the ball on the deck and tries to get by you in the half court as well as pushing in transition. Taylor Funk misses the three. House can really get up and down the floor. Mashburn, that's his spot. Missed it. Not going to miss many of those. That footwork into a jump shot is almost automatic for him at that range. Utah State, one of the best shooting teams in the country. Fourth in the nation in three-point percentage. Funk off the window. And a transfer from St. Joe's. Interesting that no double team came. Funk more of a pick and pop big. But he does have the ability to back you down to the sweet spot on the low block. Well, Desi, the transfer from Wichita State is really good in the blocks. Misses on the hook. Alec out of his hands. And the Aggies, the three seed, have the ball. It's hard if you're going to give a player five, six rhythm dribbles to get to his spot. It would be interesting if they decide to dig or maybe come with a double team at some point in that situation again. And Utah State plays without a true point guard. That was Ryland Jones' job. And he's been out for about two months. And he's out the rest of the season with a concussion. Ashworth has had to play point. Nice no-look pass from Shoga. And Berstow's fouled. Probably some mixed feelings in the Berstow household for this. Back in Australia, yes. right? Sean was a star and the MVP of this tournament for New Mexico back in the day. And here's the uh, the youngest of the Bearstows, Sean. Extremely versatile player. One of five Aggies to average in double figures, but he'll bring it up on occasion. He can rebound, he can push in transition. Good defender with his length and really high basketball IQ. Cam Bearstow, former Lobo. His sister Stephanie played at Utah State. That ball's going to stay with Utah State. He has another brother, Jared, who's been playing professionally in Australia. He did not come to the States to play college ball. That's four really good hoopers. And mom's got game two. Athletic family. Off the catch, that's where Ashworth is the best. Draws the double, and a foul, and that's House. Well, Richard Patino doesn't like that call early on on House. And that's something that officials have to adjust to players as players do to officials. This is what he does. He is an aggressive defensive player. On second glance, good call by the official, but if you're matched up with House, you've got to understand he is going to be in your space all night long. He's active with the ball in front. He's tremendous in passing lanes. And an open three for Funk. And a 5 nothing start for Utah State. House again trying for Alec. And it's going to stay with the Lobos. The Lobos lost three really tight games, two buzzer beaters. Otherwise, they might be in that last four in group right now. They were in that conversation up until about a week and a half ago. But this is a talented team. I could definitely see them making a run to the title game, even winning it. That's how good they are. It's a double dribble. Desi okay, didn't agree with the call, but not going to get anywhere arguing with the officials two minutes into the game. It has been a tremendous impact transfer from Wichita State. This trio, you could make a, in a case for them being the best trio on the West Coast, the way they all score it. Funk, remember New Mexico played yesterday, beat Wyoming, and... Utah State, as the three seed, had the day off. Funk went down on that cut. 
He appears to be okay. Taylor Funk, the grad transfer from St. Joe's. A lot of transfer portal talent out here, especially for New Mexico. Ashburn feeds Udeze. What a finish. Lobo's on the board. Shulga in tight. Bearstow in trouble. 14 to shoot. House really trying to deny Ashworth. Funk another three. You can't leave him open. He is a three-point specialist at times. He's hit 73 of them this year. And close to 40%. Well, a lot of times when you're a transfer, you kind of feel your way out. He's a big-time scorer at St. Joe's. He's fit in seamlessly for Utah State. 13 points a game on the year. And he has been a terrific ad. House with the miss. New Mexico's one of four for the field. Ashworth thought about the three. Funk, shot fake, drives, and is clobbered. Hey, bro. Udeze hey, blasted it. I don't know if there's one thing that Taylor Funk could have added to his game over the course of his college career. It would have been the ability to get the free throw line a little bit more. Coming into tonight's game has only taken 41 threes, or excuse me, 41 free throw attempts, where he's shot 90%. But when you shoot it the way he does and you're creative, you have got to be able to find your ways to create extra opportunities at the line. Yeah, he's, I mean, look, Funk is a guy, and here's another guy that's a, a key, Dan Akin. He played at UMBC for Ryan Odom, and of course, when Odom was at UMBC, they had the biggest upset in NCAA tournament history. They took down Virginia. It was back in 2018. Atkin had the first bucket in that game. And he's the last remaining player from UMBC that's still playing college basketball. And that's what he does, and that's the second foul on house. Interested to see if Richard Patino trusts Jalen House with two. Akin battling, and so House has to come out of the ball game. And Donovan Dent, who's played some good minutes off the bench, is in for New Mexico. 10-2 start for Utah State. Funk. Oh goodness! Why not? <laughs> 13 points in the first four minutes of change for Mr. Taylor Funk. Mashburn, there's the jumper and a foul. And he's got a shot at a three-point play. Utah State is one of the best shooting teams in the country. From inside the strike and outside the strike. And boy, have they shown it early on. Taylor Funk, three threes. You're watching Bracket Week from Las Vegas, presented by Kubota. This is player profile. Good time for Taylor Funk. It's been all Funk so far in Dickow. It's been impressive, 13 points. Four of five from the field already, including three threes. He's the only Aggie that's taken a field goal attempt, and rightfully so, because he's so hot. And Ryan Odom has seen this before, even before he was in a Utah State uniform, right, AJ? That's absolutely right, Rich. It's when uh, Taylor was actually still with St. Joe's and they would scrimmage UMBC that Odom got a good look at Funk and he would give them a lot of problems in those scrimmages. So when they started those talks about him possibly coming to Utah State with Odom, there was not a second thought as far as what he could contribute to this team, guys. Yeah, it, that's great. I mean, and those were the secret scrimmages that nobody gets to go to or film or whatever. And he just lit them up. 
Coaches are always watching, always evaluating. And with this transfer portal and the movement that there is in this day and age of college basketball, if you're a coach and there's an opportunity to recruit a player that you like, you got to be ready to take advantage. So the, I guess the question is, who's going to take the first shot for Utah State other than uh, Funk, who's taken all five shots, hit four of them, three of them threes. Well, there's a similar performance against Nevada, or excuse me, against Utah State earlier this year. Will Baker had 22 points to start the game against um, oh, Utah State. Funk! Wow. <laughs> That's, all right. Pick your, he's on fire. <laughs> pick your song. Right? <laughs> Unbelievable start. There's got to be a heat check on the next possession. Funk's got 16. All 16. Mashburn has got four now. All right, pick and pop and get Funk the ball in space. Oh, it's Bearstone, and he missed it. Mashburn, KJ Jenkins is in the game. So is Donovan Dents. Mashburn gets to the rim. Akin the rebound. And Mashburn would love to have that one back, but the patience with the defender on his hip before he exploded to the cup was impressive. Shulga gets a screen. He has a good mid-range game. Akin, four rebounds, but he missed that shot. And here comes Dent. Ashworth picks it loose. Akin's up ahead. Has it. Scores it. What a luxury to have Akin coming in off the bench kind of as a energy guy. One of the top players in the country. Double doubles off the bench. Remember AJ's opening comments about Ryan Odom and Utah State and the momentum they had, the five straight wins, the win over Boise State, trying to carry that through here. And it looks like, so far, they have. No look, Shoga. Acton gets free throws. All right, tournament profile, a couple things here. The net is great, right? No team in the top 30 of the net's ever missed the tournament. Jerry Palm has him in as the last four in, in that first four group. However, and one of the things you talk, I had a chance this week to talk to Jerry Palm about Utah State. And one of the things he points out that the team sheets that the selection committee members fill out the net ranking has to be supported by other data on that team. And the details sometimes matter more than the metrics. And some of those other details that are missing, quad one wins, away and neutral, strength of schedule, non-conference strength of schedule. They have some good wins, but they don't have the, the quad one bolt that had, others do. They haven't had the opportunity that a power conference team would have as Alec gets free, gets fouled, and go to the line. But, you know, they just picked up their first quad win, quad one win in the home finish against Boise State. But we get a chance to look at, these are the highest ranked net teams to not make an NCAA tournament. If Utah State were to somehow not make the field, they would be the highest team ever to not make it due to net rankings. I know they say that the eye test isn't part of it, but when you watch Utah State, this is a basketball team that deserves to be in the NCAA tournament. They're that good. And the funny thing is that while Utah State has the data and they need a few more details, and a win here tonight would be a nice detail, New Mexico has some nice details, but not the data. They have road wins, New Mexico does, at San Diego State and at St. Mary's. Those are both really nice wins. St. Mary's 10 in the net right now. San Diego State hovering right around the 20 mark. <laughs> Funk scores. Funk's got a free throw. 
Funk's already got 18 points, looking to increase it to 19. A season high, 22 against Santa Clara as well as against San Diego State. He could eclipse that partway through the first half. He's a unique player. 6'9", 220, he glides, he shoots the three. And he's got 19 points already. Mashburn. Got it. It was a two. It was just inside the strike. He's such a quick decision maker. If you're not up at the point of the screen as the defender guarding the screener, you're too late because he makes his decision and he's got tremendous footwork and pop getting into his jump shot. Remember, Jalen House has been on the bench with two fouls for about four or five minutes. Bearstow. They come at you in a swarm. They have five players that average double figures. Bashburn's putting on a mid-range clinic. He's doing everything he can to keep this game within striking distance. House with those two fouls has put a lot of responsibility on Mashburn's shoulders to keep it close. He walks. Ashworth was between a pass and a dribble. Well, Utah State out of the gates quickly. Taylor Funk and his band grooving right now in Vegas. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Kubota. Together we do more by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure, and by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Really nice start for Utah State, a 25-14 lead final, quarterfinal in the Mountain West. Ryan Odom, head coach, moments ago with our A.J. Ross. Coach, there's only two words I can say. Taylor Funk, he has 18 points inside, outside. He's getting great looks. How much does his versatility open the floor for you guys? Yeah, I mean, certainly he's hot, obviously, early in this game, but we got to settle in. You know, it's a long game. Uh, learned long ago, early early leads never hold. So we've got to make sure that we're, we're playing the right type of basketball. More worried about Mashburn getting downhill on us too much. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. All right, thanks. All right, thank you, AJ. That was probably his dad that taught him that, right, Dave Odom? <laughs> Or the previous game where Boise State got off to a hot start, was up 22, and then UNLV forced overtime. There's something about this Mountain West tournament that no lead is safe. Funk, who had that really nice game against New Mexico earlier this year, they only played one time this year. They didn't play each other twice. It was at Utah State, an 11-point win for the Aggies. and rolling. Idle Rock missed the three. Idle Rock didn't make the three, but that's a big time play from Akin on the roll. To catch in traffic, avoid a charge, and find the open shooter in the corner. Oh boy, Alec. House is back in and he hits a three. Richard Petino putting House back in with two fouls and 11 minutes left in this half. I like it. You're in a almost must win situation. You got to roll with your best players. Whether they have two early fouls or not, you got to trust him that he's going to make the right decisions. Mashburn. Shulga handles a lot of the ball handling duties, point guard duties. And a foul on Shulga. Tomorrow, 5 Eastern, the MAC tournament. Bracket week continues from Cleveland. First semifinal, one seed Toledo, five seed Ohio. Kent State has had such a great season. They're a two seed, Akron the three seed. That's on CBS Sports Network. Semifinal showdown.
Funk is out. Shoga is out. Shoga's got two fouls. This is a really good bench, though. Z Hamoda, Dan Akin, and RJ Idlerock in right now. Mashburn. Hamoda with the rebound. He is the, the first ever NCAA player from Bahrain. That's Alec with the block. And that's hustle to get back down the floor. A tremendous play from Alec. He doesn't get the credit that the trio of House, Mashburn, and Udeze gets because he doesn't score like they do. But big time effort, big time play to come up with the block in transition. Ashworth hasn't taken a shot yet. Atkins steps through and scores. This guy, a Brit. Udeze <laughs> up and down. I mean, up and down these two teams. You got to get back in defensive transition. There's no time to jog back, sprint back, protect the rim. We got another good game at the Thomas and Mac. Lobos on their way back right now. Utah State jumped to an early lead. Eight point lead right now. And you Lobo fans, don't worry. Richard Patino and the Lobos do have a path to the NCAA tournament because, because of the stuff that they have on their resume. Win at St. Mary's, that's almost impossible. Win at San Diego State, that's not easy. They beat Boise State. Jerry Palm says must win the Mountain West tournament, but I don't know. I think if they beat Utah State, and then they beat Boise State. I think all of a sudden they're in that last four in territory. I agree. I think if they make a run to the title game, uh, there is a chance that they make the tournament. And the expectations were set extremely high after starting off 14 and 0. When you look at the big picture, though, the improvement in two years under Patino has been incredible. Ashworth, first shot. And down it goes. So House is back in, playing with two fouls. Mashburn's gone for 10 on five of nine shooting. And the Lobos have shot it well there, 50%. Udeze going to work. Man, is he good. And he's really improved since stepping on the Albuquerque campus. That's a great matchup. Akin and Udeze, two bigs who aren't afraid of physical play. Don't leave Ashworth alone. That is the guy you don't want to leave alone. Yes, Tyler, Taylor Funk has got hot to start the game, but Ashford, one of the best in the country at shooting it beyond the arc, sixth in three-point percentage, and he makes three a game. Udeze. They said Utah State is the hottest team in the Mountain West coming into this tournament, and they're playing like it right now. Without a doubt, they are. Udeze flashing that footwork and the touch with the jump hook, but Ashworth not to be outdone by his teammate Funk. He can get hot in a hurry and stay hot. He's got three games this season with seven or more made threes. Last four games, he's been lights out, 21 a game. Hamoda, Ashworth again. House ahead to Dent. Over Doris, or excuse me, over Funk. Great finish by Dent. Funk did everything he could to vertically challenge this shot, but a better finish. Hamoda is explosive. <laughs> They're not letting Funk breathe at all. He's four of six from distance. Dorius. Oh. Was that House? That was. Mashburn. Great pace, great tempo. Seven and a half left, first half. Bear still probing, lobbing. Alec again with a great defensive play. House three. House just plays with a supreme level of confidence. He's fun to watch because of it. 
And a lot of guys don't have the freedom from their coach to shoot a pull-up three and transition like that. He does because he plays so hard on both ends of the floor and he's skilled. House on the run. Hamoda with the foul. What a tempo. It has been. Jalen House with the two fouls. Getting it going from the three-point line, not to be outdone by one of the best shooters in the country. You are watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. Ten-point lead for the three-seed Utah State. Richard Patino, head coach for New Mexico with our A.J. Ross. Coach got down early, and then Jalen Howes got into some foul trouble early, but having him back out there with two fouls, how much of an impact does he have on both ends of the floor? Yeah, I mean, he's an energy guy all over the court. We're just obviously not doing a very good job on funk. we got to make him more uncomfortable. I mean, when he's in a rhythm, he can shoot with anybody in the country. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. We appreciate the Mountain West coaches during timeouts talking to uh, AJ. It's always good to talk to Richard Patino. He's a bright young coach, always very candid. We had a, a nice Zoom this morning. Yeah, he mentioned energy with Jalen House, but you can see the energy that Coach Patino provides to his ball club. The two years that he spent in Albuquerque, you can't say enough about the turnaround. I mean, again, it's one of the most prideful programs in the Mountain West, and this league is better when they are good. And there's, a, there's ways to measure. I told you about the jump in Ken Palm, 245 points. It's the first 20-win season since 2014. But maybe more important than anything, the pit is back. Right? That's a difficult place to play. The pit is back. They averaged over 14,000 in Mountain West home games this year. I had a chance to play there twice in college. Once Gonzaga, we beat them in overtime. And then we lost the game in the NCAA tournament. So I have mixed feelings about the pit. Ashworth, you just can't leave him. He needs no space. And House. Ryan Odom comes up with that turnover. He is a mercurial guard. He's one of the best defensive guards. It's Richard Patino says sometimes he gets a little too fast. Well, you... You have to live with an occasional turnover like that from him because he's always trying to make things happen. You know, defensively, he's a ball hawk. If you make a mistake with it in front of him, he's going to take it. He's great in the passing lanes, over two and a half steals per game. But he, he plays with a confidence on the offensive end that no matter what the previous possession was, he's going to make the play the next time. That's a charge. I'm with you on that. I mean, you just look at what Jalen House is doing this year. He leads the Mount West in steals, second in assists, fifth in scoring. This is Hamoda, and that's his second. He and Shulga now both have two. Hamoda's been a little bit out of control that time, resulting in a charge. There's been a couple other dribble drive opportunities where he's dribbled into a crowd. Donovan Dent sweeping into the lane. That's a nice bucket for the freshman. That's big because you need another score outside of the trio to get going. Jeez, Ashworth is just red hot. Four of five, three threes, 11 points. Been tremendous this year as Alec gets called for a moving screen, but you know, Ashworth as a freshman, Average six a game as a sophomore, not even nine a game. Started the season as sixth man. So first player off the bench with Ryland Jones being out. He's had to accept responsibility of setting up the offense without forgetting to look for his own shot. He's been really good. Off the catch, that's where he's dangerous. Pierce, though, probing. Idle Rock. Dent steps through. It's a charge. New Mexico can't believe it. Richard Patino is irate. as if he may have been sliding 
just a little bit to the left, his left. Glad I don't have to make that call, but <laughs> as do I. That may be a break for Utah State. Ashworth finds Funk. <laughs> Alec with the rebound. House. Ashworth with the foul. House is playing with two fouls, remember. Ashworth picks up his first. He is, of course, the, the son of the great scorer, Eddie House, from Arizona State. And that's where Jalen started his career. And he didn't play a whole lot. And the man, when he arrived here, all of a sudden, he found the coach that set him loose. And he has really blossomed. So many times for players, it's about fit. And New Mexico's been a tremendous fit for him. You know, just as the fit for his dad, Eddie, had at Arizona State, his Uncle Mike had at Arizona, his grandfather did at UCLA. Players many times look at the name on the jersey or the, the league as opposed to where can I go and have a great career. Nowadays with the transfer portal, you're allowed to transfer without sitting out so guys can fix a mistake earlier in their career. And this is a, a this is coming from a guy who was a better fit at Gonzaga than he was at Washington where you started your career. Yeah, and, and I fell victim to that in my recruiting back in high school, thinking bigger is better. That isn't always the case, it's fit. Still an 11 point lead, Isla Rock. Torres in trouble, going down. Possession still alive. Clocks at five. Dorius. And a foul. Dorius. That was an, it was not a pretty possession. Let's just put it that way. Timeout on the floor. New Mexico. Big start by Utah State. He's up by 11. You're watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. Late night in the Mountain West quarterfinals. Late night on the desk of New York. AT&T at the half. Adam Zucker, Wally Zerbiak, Chris Walker, John Rossley. Thanks for staying up with us. We'll get you caught up on all these tournaments, the brackets. Teams in, teams out, AT&T at the half. Jerry Palm, now this is to begin the day. Here's where the last four have been today, and the first four have done. Mississippi State beats Florida, that's good for them. Michigan lost to Rutgers, they'll probably, and I think they have already changed spots in that. Rutgers is now in that last four in group. Oklahoma State lost to Texas, that's good news for Utah State. North Carolina lost to Virginia, that's also good news for Utah State. Arizona State? How about that? Beating USC. USC just beat them on a, in a tight game in L.A. last week. Yeah, that Pac-12 tournament just across the strip here in Las Vegas. There's no better place to be than Las Vegas during championship week. Mountain West, the WCC, Pac-12, WAC. Big West. Big West. There are five conference tournaments here in Vegas. It seems like every big casino now has their own arena. Yeah. And of course, this is on the UNLV campus, the Thomas and Mack. Let's see if New Mexico now can make a run as we get close to halftime. Jalen House back on the bench. Remember, he's playing with two fouls. Taylor Funk opens with a hot hand, and he goes down in a heap, falls loose, Idle Rock, Atkin! Back to 11, Mashburn. Funk has 19 in this game. Ashworth has 11. 
Ekin, of course, is the sixth man of the year in the conference. Turns down the shot, misses the hook, and Dorius lost the rebound to Udeze. It's going to stay with New Mexico. You can tell it's March with the amount of effort and the bodies flying all over the place. Utah State comes up with that loose ball, resulting in Akin with the flush. Dent. Udeze. Akin, you could hear the hand hit the ball. And Akin is late getting back down the floor. Iowa Rock leans in. Javante oh. Johnson. Udeze, Alec, free throws. Start play number 50 in the net. Everyone's going to have to recover. You know, here in Las Vegas, it's popular to buy those, those, you know, hangover pills <laughs> that, that help you through a tough morning. Sure. I mean, we may all have to dip into that after this Thursday. The semis tomorrow are just terrific. San Diego State, San Jose State. Boise State gets the winner here. Yeah, Boise State, Degenhardt came up gimpy midway through the second half. We'll be interested to see how he feels, but you and I both have early flights out of Vegas tomorrow. Ashworth. That's short. Final two minutes, first half. Nashburn. Tipped. And it last touched the Lobo. I think Alec got it. Utah State has won five straight. They are number 22 in the net. Mexico's done a tremendous job on Taylor Funk after that first outburst has yet to score after he had 19 early. Amend that, please. <laughs> I will. Nice floater in the lane there. With how hot he was from early, they have been taking away every opportunity. Make them pay with a little lift fake attack into the middle of the paint. They're daring Udeze to shoot. And that's why Alec. Possession still on. This is Dent. Delivers. And I think Hamoda has got him on the arm. Here's the irony of this game when you think about it for Utah State. What are they in need of? They're in need of quad one wins, right? They have a lot of other stuff. But as Jerry Palm pointed out, they could use a few more of those details. If they beat New Mexico on a neutral floor, that's a quad one win. The problem is New Mexico's 50 in the net. They could fall out of 50. Yes. So it would go from quad one win to moments later, quad two win. Interesting how the net rankings adjust throughout the course of the year. And I don't know if that's necessarily fair because what if a team has injuries and they slide due to losses in the net? but you beat a team at its full potential earlier in the season. I don't know that the Lobos, if they lose this game, would drop that far. Richard Pitino has no plans to do that. 45 seconds left, first half. Our finale in Vegas tonight.
42-33, nine point lead, three seed, Utah State. Mountain West's overtime in three of six games already in this tournament. San Diego State very easily could have lost that game to Colorado State. Isaiah Stevens had a couple of shots late. Boise State blew a 22 point lead in the first half and then saw UNLV hit a near impossible three to go to overtime. It was that classic scenario, you're up three, late clock, do you foul? Put the other team on the line, Boise State chose not to. Extra possession on the glass gave Noel a chance to knock down a three. Unbelievable turn of events at the end of that game. Shulga, Lob, oh, Akin! Midpoint pass. Look at Mendes' job from Aiken to go get it. Look at Ryan Odom drawing that up in the timeout. Ashburn, rising, missing, tip, Idle Rock. Two seconds left. Idle Rock, half court. Well, it was Taylor Funk that started the whole dance, right? He went for 19 in this first half. Utah State. Shoga to Akin. And a catch and a flush. And Akin off the bench, showing why he's the sixth man of the year. A.J. Ross down below with Ryan Odom. That's right, Coach Odom. You said you wanted your team to play fearless coming into this one. How would you assess their aggressiveness in the first half here? Yeah, I think our guys are playing playing really hard. I mean, both teams obviously have gotten in a bit of foul trouble. Uh, they have House with two and maybe another guy or two as well. We've got several. With, we've got one with three. All right, so it's, it's a tough game right now. We're both trying to just get through that first half, but now we can regroup and see what we can do in the second half. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. All right, thanks. All right, AJ. Taylor Funk. 21 at the half. And a big lead for Utah State. After the break, Adam and the gang in New York. Last game of the night in Vegas. You're watching the Mountain West Tournament quarterfinals. Last quarterfinal of the night in Las Vegas in the Mountain West in Utah State. A quick start. A lot of threes. Taylor Funk hit four of those seven threes. And they have an 11 point lead. Rich Waltz along with Dan Dickow, AJ Ross will join us shortly. This is a Utah State that looks like the hottest team in the Mountain West, which they are. They won five in a row coming in. Yeah, that five in a row obviously is important, but the way they were playing is equally important because their season, hate to say it, kind of hangs in the balance of how they perform in Las Vegas in the conference tournament. And I tell you what, their two leading scorers absolutely came to play. Taylor Funk started the game on a 16 point run all by himself. Then leading scorer Stephen Ashworth got in on the party. 11 points, including three from beyond the arc. Best shooting team in the Mountain West, one of the best in the country. And don't forget Dan Atkin, the sixth man of the year in the Mountain West. He has some key points and rebounds, and uh, he's been terrific all year. A.J. Ross down below. A.J.? Well, Rich, I can tell you, Coach Richard Pertino told me that he needs, or their team needs to get more pressure on this Utah State team. They knew coming in what kind of offense they were facing on defense. They have to make them more uncomfortable. When I asked him about putting up more points with his team, he says he plans to let Jalen House loose in these last 20 minutes. Of course, foul trouble hurt with House earlier in the first half, but they're going to let him go in the second one, guys. Thank you, AJ. This has been a terrific day. Two overtime games, three nail biters. This is a fun one. And the common thread has been A.J. Ross. She has been here for the entire quarterfinal round. House. He said he was going to let him loose right off the top, mid pick and roll. Creates an opportunity, knocks it down. Cuts the lead to single digits. And remember our first game here tonight. Boise State was up by 22 seemingly on their way to a win, lost that lead. UNLV came back, tied it, sent the game to overtime, where Boise State won it. Mashburn, ball out of bounds, Utah State ball. This has been a wonderful crowd as well. Here's a look at House. Well, he's got great timing as he sets up 
going into that pick and roll. A lot of times guards will go too soon. So the big has to get out. That time goes at the exact right moment. Creates the space with his quickness and knocks it down. House on Ashworth. House had two fouls early in that half. Came back out. Bearstow. Good defense there from Ashburn. Bearstow wanted to take advantage of the size differential there, but Ashburn, a nice job of using his leverage. Johnson's pass, Dorius closes. Nice step through by Shulga. That's not every day if you're a Utah State Aggie fan that you see Dorius get into the passing lane and push it in transition, but you got to like the outcome and the results. Udeze, Dorius fouled him. If you're New Mexico, you need Mashburn, you need House, you need Udeze to get it in gear. Dorius is second. Normally, Dorius doesn't leave the paint defensively as a rim protector, paint protector, but that time made a break on it, came up with a steal, gets it up ahead to Shulga. That's a big man's dream. Get <laughs> out in passing lanes and push it in transition. Udeze now with 11. Eight years at Minnesota, two NCAA tournaments there. Won the NIT as well. Patino in his second year, one of the biggest turnarounds in the country. I mean, last year they were 13 and 19. They were five and 12 in the conference. House, the thief. Wow, the quickness, the bucket. And the Lobos seem energized. Shoulder driving. And a foul mesh boom. Oh, wow. I thought that would have gone the other way, but the anticipation and the quickness from House, impressive. I mean, the acceleration, he was not out in front of everybody when he stole that ball. He was moving the other direction. Yeah. He's the kind of guy that you have to be careful with, whether you're dribbling it or passing oh. around him. <laughs> My goodness. Taylor Funk. Alec with a drive and an answer from New Mexico. Alex has been quiet throughout most of the night, but he does so much of the dirty work that enables House and Mashburn to be as successful as they are. Dorius gets the feed, misses with the left hand. Probably the third opportunity at the rim where Dorius couldn't complete the play. Mashburn, no. Udeze, no. And I think the ball went out of bounds off of a Utah State player. Let's watch the sequence again. It does a little bit of a power outage from Udeze. <laughs> that was an easy block for Akin, who's in the game. Bear stole. against House, offensive foul. That's just tremendous defense, heart, anticipation from House. When you're a pest like that defensively, you can frustrate an opposing perimeter who's not used to posting up into trying to play that bang type of post-up game. Bearstow goes for the second hit. House reads it perfectly to draw the charge. Ryan Odom still has his arms upright. And New Mexico feels like that one they're on should continue. Mashburn, jumper, and it does continue. The lead's down to six. Biggest lead was 13. We get the feeling that we've got another game going down to the wire. It'll be par for the course in the Mountain West quarterfinals. 
Funk. Floater. And a foul. Udeze. This crowd is just deafening right now. It's a huge contingent here from New Mexico and a really large one from Utah State. And they've both been vocal. Mashburn is what a lot of people would consider an undersized two guard, but he doesn't use that as an excuse. He does a tremendous job of attacking at angles. He's got great footwork. He creates just enough space then to be able to elevate high enough to get his jump shot off. I think he's a terrific scorer at the college level. Funk is sitting on 24. 25 lead back to seven there's a ton of time i mean a ton of time left in this game so the pace that these two teams play at provides lots of possession mashburn Akin. alec is a good defender he can defend a variety of players so he's chasing funk around right now ashworth Shoulder kicks, idle rock. Ball fake, three-pointer. Ooh, got it! Wow, kept that left foot down just enough for House to fly by. Look at Ashworth on the floor. Shoulder! Idle rock blocked. Wow. There is no quit in either of these two teams. This is a marvelous time in Las Vegas. Today and tonight, Stephen Ashworth, oh, toe on the ground, three in the net, 10-point lead. You're watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. CBS Sports celebrates Women's History Month, recognizing the outstanding contributions of women and girls and the contributions they've made on and off the field of play. 53-43. How good has the Mountain West been this year? This good. Fifth best in the country. Best on the West Coast. And this tournament, this day, this quarterfinal day, is a great illustration of that. Every game has been close. Every game has been tight. You know, and you also look at a couple teams had disappointing seasons because of injuries, namely Wyoming. They were preseason top two, preseason player of the year in Graham E.K. Had they not had to deal with injuries, they would have had a successful season as well. So lots of talent and lots of productive seasons by teams across the board. Shulga, late clock three. Colorado State had some injuries too yeah. this year that kind of knocked them off the pedestal. Well, they were last year. House on the run. Ball's loose. Race for it. Idle Rock has it. Idle Rock finishes. Patino arguing for a foul, but more importantly for New Mexico, terrible defensive transition balance. When a point guard like House drives for a layup opportunity, somebody's got to rotate back for spacing and be able to take away runout opportunities like that. Great defense, great denial. And just when it felt like New Mexico was going to make a run and get a little closer, Utah State comes out and on a 6-0 run stretches the lead back to double digits. Ashworth waiting. House closing out. He kept his dribble, no walk, and a foul there. Coach Patino wants a walk. So here's an example of nobody back in defensive transition. So House took the layup. Mashburn, as he sees he's going, has to work himself up out of the corners, as does Johnson. They don't, leading to two Utah State Aggies in a run out. Funk. Having the, I want to say it's the, the game of his life, but he had a, some huge games at St. Joe's. Alec picks up his second. Funk gets two shots. 25 in the game. 8 of 12 from the field. 5 of 7 from 3. 
We heard AJ's report from the first half. The secret scrimmages between UMBC coached by Ryan Odom and St. Joe's, who had a lanky three-point shooter, Taylor Funk. And Funk used to like those scrimmages. Up. Ryan Odom never forgot it. Opportunity transfer portal. Funk liked the uh, style of UMBC, liked the style, and it said, I'm on my way to Logan, Utah. KJ Jenkins in the game from New Mexico. This is House. And House gets it up and in. And a foul and a free throw. He's fearless, man. Both he and Mashburn are just absolutely fearless. Without a doubt. In the contact that he created shows you that he does not have any regard for the fact that Aiken outweighs him by probably a good 50 pounds. But that's a lot how his dad, Eddie, played at Arizona State. Wiry, strong, just needed an opening to get his jump shot off. One of the best scorers in Pac-10 recent history. Ashworth on the run. Ashworth, a reverse layup. He's got 16. Jenkins. Alec is fouled. Ashworth plays with just a, such a calming presence out on the court. Probes off of turning the corner with that pick and roll action. Protects it from the converging defender. And then the spin off the glass. And he gets so much acclaim for being a shooter, which he should. But he's developed a really nice all-around game. Jenkins. Alec. Stolen. Shulga streaks loose. Steps through. Missed the layup. Follow. Bearstow. Timeout New Mexico. The Aggies, the hottest team in the Mountain West, playing like it. Their fans are here. Jerry Palm. This is a good team. Watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. Utah State a 61-45 lead. Kind of an up and down year for Utah State. First nine games, really good. Next 17 games, some injuries. Ryland Jones they lost. But man, their last five, they've been outstanding. And of course, the win over Boise State was big. And they're smacking New Mexico right now. And I love to take that momentum into a rematch against Boise State in the semifinals tomorrow night. Just, I like the way they play. As a, as a former player myself who really gravitated towards offensive execution and freedom on that end of the floor, how Utah State played is really something that I like to watch. Komoda just picked up his fourth personal. But remember, I mean, this is a Utah State program that has been to three of the last four NCAA tournaments. And I'm counting the COVID year because, remember, they played the tournament early that year, and they won that tournament. Yeah. So they qualified for the tourney. Mashburn with a jumper, baseline, snaps that 12-2 run. Picking up the pressure now, full court. I like the decision from... Richard Patino, he's got long-rangey athletes. See if they can't create a little bit of confusion for Utah State on that end of the floor. Ashworth flashes. Shulga, gotta get a shot up. It's blocked. That was Dent, and a foul 
Let me check in with A.J. Ross. A.J.? Rich, I can tell you during that last time out, Coach Patino was stressing they have to get back and play better transition defense. On the other side of the ball, he was telling them to stay paced. They have to take this one possession at a time and climb back into this one, guys. A.J., have you taken this one quarter final at a time? I mean, this, have been, <laughs> this is your fourth game of the day. Yes, it's a marathon, not a sprint, guys. And you've done a fabulous job of keeping that energy up. Mashburn misses. House. Ball's knocked out of bounds. In our production unit here, we've got Ken Mack as our producer, Mike Arnold, our director, and uh, our technicians, tape, audio, engineers, support team, camera people, the women and men here at CBS Sports have been outstanding all day long. Semifinals tomorrow night, CBS Sports Network, the championship game on CBS with Kevin Harlan and Dan Bonner on Saturday. Akin backs in. Ashworth, another ball fake. That's a foul. And that's three free throws. And that's House with the foul. That's his third. 61-47, Utah State. Make sure you tune into the 2023 Reese's College All-Star Game. CBS Sports Network. It's presented by Walmart. It's from the Final Four, March 31st, 4.30 Eastern right here on CBS Sports Network. Reese is the official snack of the broadcast crew here in the final game of the Mountain West quarterfinal. Yeah, in between. Yes. It was a very Breaks. good timing <laughs> for this sponsorship. Well, the one nice thing is this game's going late here in Las Vegas. This city never sleeps, so we will be able to find a meal afterwards. Remember the last time you said that to me, and I won't name the, the, establishment. Drive, the establishment that had a drive through open. But that's part of the problem when it's a drive through establishment. It did not work out. That, that was you and I earlier this season. Ashworth, free throw, missed it. You know, when Ashworth was a high school player, he won a state championship at Lone Peak High School. Every now and then he'd come to Logan and play pickup and the guy that always chose him on his team Sam Merrill and for Ashworth that was huge Merrill was a guy he always admired and of course Merrill who had the great shot one of the greatest shots in Mountain West Conference history to win the tournament now is back in the NBA I think he just got called up on a 10-day contract as a, a championship ring with Milwaukee that was the idol for Ashworth was Sam Merrill. So when he picked him, he kept picking him on his pickup team. It was like, well, there was no doubt he was coming to Utah State. <laughs> Sometimes players are better recruiters than coaches, in all honesty. But, you know, Sam Merrill proved that you don't have to be the tallest, the quickest, the strongest, but you have to be skilled and a desire Ooh. to know how to play the game. How about that? Mashburn was fouled. And you count the bucket. There is no quit in Jamal Mashburn Jr. There's no quit in Jalen House. I would not be surprised to see them put together a little run. Maybe expect three-quarter court, full-court pressure here of some sort. And there's a, uh, I've said it before, this second half seems to be taking forever. There's a bunch of time left, 11 and a half minutes left. Donovan Dent on Shulga. Funk. Oh, Lord. Wow. Oh, man, this guy. What's his career high? 36 at St. Joe's. This is a career high at Utah State. He's got 30 in this game. Alec. Fourteen point lead. Funk is 9 of 13. I expect more actions where 
Funk's in the pick and pop situations, or maybe the lift guy into space and pick and rolls, because you've got to keep finding him. He's been terrific. Fairstow, Akin. An offensive rebound leads to another Aggie bucket. As good as Funk has been on the offensive end of the floor, great possession there to get back and build a wall against House in transition because he can create something out of nothing when he pushes it. Nice bucket there by Donovan Dent. One number that has to make Ryan Odom really happy right now is the assist percentage tonight for Utah State. They have 16 assists to go with 24 buckets. They're one of the best in the country at that. And that coaches really dig that. That's one of the metrics they love. And that's the assist percentage. How many of your buckets have an assist attached? They average 60%. They're first in the Mountain West, 19th in the country. Well, it's something that they stress in the fall in their individual and group workouts. And so the knocks down another three. That was assisted, but they <laughs> emphasize it in workouts. And then when you get to the team setting and practices, the actions that they play with make it so difficult for the opponent to guard. And on top of that, there's great spacing and, and stress points of creating for others. Ashworth back to Akin and House and the foul is on Ashworth House is just relentless defensively. He doesn't give up on that end of the floor. It's unbelievable his effort on that end of the floor. Here's a great example. You set your defender up come back for the handoff and you're ready on the catch Ashworth Looked as if he tried to sell a foul at first. But then House ran through the play. That's just call it blowing up the play, where you just run through to make sure they can't get that dribble handoff pass. Ashworth has four personals. And that's this, I mean, it's now, right now for New Mexico, right? Now is their chance. Ashworth's on the bench. It's 71-54. Yeah, Idle, Idle Rock is in. With those four fouls now, with no true point guard for Utah State, and, and Ashworth has taken over that role with Ryland Jones being out for the season. You're putting a lot of responsibility on Idle Rock, Shulga's shoulders, and on occasion, Bearstow. They, they can make occasional point guard plays or entries into the offense, but Ashworth has had the bulk of the responsibility throughout the season once Jones has been out. Akin misses the free throw. Ashworth, 18 points, four fouls, five assists. You see the foul trouble. Udeze now has four for New Mexico, and he's on the bench. Ashburn with 17, House has 11. Udeze has a dozen. Alec in, fouled, a bucket and a free throw. <laughs> Alec simply used his strength to get where he wanted. Bearstow tried to be vertical and kind of just stay out of the way. Alec creates the contact, finishes it, chance of the three-point play, but unbelievable strength there. That's Bearstow's fourth. So all of a sudden, what seems like a comfortable lead is a little bit uneasy. With nine minutes left, you've got a New Mexico team that can score quickly and score in bunches, and you've got some key Aggies on the bench. And Hamoda comes in for Bearstow. He has four fouls as well. I'd be curious to see just how long Coach Odom decides to go with Ashworth on the floor. Many times you got to trust your best players to play with foul trouble. Komoda handling. This is where Max Scholga is so important to Utah State. He can handle. He can shoot. Shulga. 
Recognize the mistake the defense makes. He goes under, stop behind, let it fly. Johnson. Javante Johnson with a three. His first shot of the game. With Ashworth out, New Mexico has tried to pick up their pressure in the backcourt. Good decision. Idle Rock, Hamoda takes a long three and it bangs out. KJ Jenkins, Dent. Alec Idle Rock fouled him. It's a 15 point game, eight minutes left. Interesting, Utah State, Ashworth was about to sub in, but because that foul was so close to the media timeout, eight minutes, three seconds, the first whistle after the eight minute mark would be an automatic media timeout. Utah State staff decided to bring him back to the bench. Jalen House, he has three fouls. And Alec cuts the lead to 14. There's that full court pressure. Funk has had the big night. He's got 30. One more. Nope. Short on the three. Hamoda, his foot was on the baseline when he took off. And the under eight timeouts. Three seed Utah State, still a big lead, 75-61. Foul trouble, though. You're watching Bracket Week, presented by Kubota. Seventy-five, sixty. Utah State on top. Reaching new heights is brought to you by Werner Ladder. You always want to be on a Werner Ladder when the tournament ends. That means you're cutting down the nets. And if you haven't seen this guy play, Taylor Funk, what a night he's had. Thirty points, a career high in an Aggie uniform, but started off as a man on a mission. The first sixteen points of the game for Utah State was from him. He has not looked back. He's continued to play extremely well. Out of the timeout, Mashburn going to work, going to the bucket, going to the line. Three-point play opportunity, and still a ton of time left. Akin, his third foul. really start looking at the foul issues for Utah State. When do you bring, and that's a question that Ryan Odom has to answer, when do you bring Ashworth back in? I would think he's got to come in in the next minute or so. I mean, especially now that New Mexico is picking up the pressure full court. He's their best ball handler. He gets them into offense more cleanly than anybody else. He's a scoring threat anytime he gets in to entry areas and offense. Idle Rock, ball handoff. Idle oh, 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 man. That was a violent block by <laughs> violent Josiah right. Alec. It's a little frustration let out with that block. Perfect timing, perfect execution. I'm sorry, Mr. Idle Rock. That's all mine. Here comes Stephen Ashworth with four fouls. And 18 points back in for Utah State. And part of the reason is you got to trust him defensively to be smart. Stay out of situations where he can pick up the fifth, but you need somebody to be able to control and manage the game on the offensive end of the floor. There's still seven minutes left, a lot of time. You got to have good offensive possessions. Shot clock violation. Ashworth trying to get it to Akin. And if you're New Mexico, feels like you've got an opportunity here. Richard Patino and the Lobos are down 12. Foul trouble for Utah State. Big crowd rising to their feet. Coming from the land of enchantment. Alec, the dunk. Oh, the five from Mashburn, but the patience from Alec.
to feel the defense converging. Let them fly by. Finish with patience. Timeout. Utah State. Ten point ball game. And Josiah Alec with Udeze on the bench has really played well. He's another one of those transfers that many times is fans go searching in the transfer portal finding out who's available and who's not many times they look at points or they look at rebounds they don't look at fit well richard patino deserves a lot of credit because he went out and found josiah alec as well as udeze to pair extremely well with his great backcourt of house national and you see alec in the middle of that little he's got quad one hair <laughs> right i mean i would say so I mean, you had quad one here when you played in the NBA and at Gonzaga. I have, like, I'm, I'm a quad three here at this point. <laughs> I need to schedule better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a little bit of gray popping through. If you ask my kids, I've got a lot of gray popping in now. But that this being guy, said. So this guy played. <laughs> Dan Dickel played and always had great hair and owns a string of barber shops in Spokane. It's, it's an oddity, that's for sure. I always found that ironic. Funk, good job by Johnson defensively. And here's Akin and a foul before that. By the way, we were away at commercial and, and New Mexico had 61 points and when we came back, they had 60. It's because they went and looked at the Johnson jumper and his foot was on the line, so they changed it to a two. Alec now has three fouls. Do, did you, do you ever go get a haircut at your barbershops? Without a doubt. I got one uh, the day before coming down here. So Tuesday, I got a, I got a quick trim in Spokane at the barbers. And I'm sure you're a good tipper. Yes. Ten point game, six and a half left. Nashburn. I would not want to have to guard him. Because it's almost impossible. Falling away. Short. Good job by Isla Rock, who's a big guard. Dent. And Johnson, and a bucket, and single digits. Well, the pressure of New Mexico has caused fits. Surprise, Ashworth is back on the bench. They need his calming presence out there, getting them into offense. Maybe they're waiting for the under four timeout. Cholga, shot clock's down. Offense has grown stagnant. Akin is open for the dunk. Nice find by Idle Rock. And no backside help for New Mexico. Exactly right. No help to be found. Akin wide open in the middle of the key. Johnson, line drive three. Look at Alec tip it back out. That's a great play. Jenkins rises. Oh, in and out. And the tip. We'll stay with New Mexico. 20 to shoot, five to play. Last quarter final in the Mountain West. About as close as you can get to two points without actually getting two points. Johnson driving hard. Both tipped. Utah State, Funk. See Ryan Odom trying to slow things down, Shulga. It's hard to slow it down against New Mexico. They'll stir you up. Shulga's fouled. Shows you the value of a point guard on the floor in these situations that can be a calming presence out there. 
Max Scholga, when the defensive pressure climbed into him there, he wasn't able to get Utah State organized. He was simply trying to protect the ball and not allow it to get stolen. Biggest lead was 18 by Utah State. New Mexico got within six. Shulga from Ukraine. It's something that the, the team, the coaching staff, the community have all gotten behind this young man whose family is still in Ukraine. He's leaned on his teammates, on his coaches. Udeze's back in with four fouls. Alec, some really good minutes from the senior out of Lincoln, Nebraska. Foul trouble, everyone's there. Let's see if House has returned. Ignites them. Dent, nice Udeze, that's a really nice find by Donovan Dent. Ashworth still on the bench. Shulga and House gets the foul. Wow, I don't know about that one. That's his fourth. There's been possessions throughout this game where there's been more contact than that. House, a nice job of getting under the first one. That's almost just let it go. Shoulders free throw. Lead at 11. Well, Utah State can afford to have Ashworth on the bench right now. I don't know that New Mexico can afford to have House on the bench with four fouls. He's still in there. They need everything they got right now. Ashburn turns the corner. Falling away. Missed it. Dorius the rebound. We're under four minutes in the final quarterfinal in the Mountain West. And there's been a spectacular, and I mean spectacular day of basketball. Two overtime games. Another near upset nail biter, San Diego State, outlasting Isaiah Stevens in Colorado State. Shulga in deep. Funk a three. He missed it. Hamoda has the rebound. Fresh 20 on the clock. Here in Utah State. Make sure you get enough time off that clock and don't rush anything. Last call for the Lobos. Do they have a run in them? 81-69, Utah State. Basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Werner, the official ladder of NCAA March Madness. Reach new heights. We opened our session tonight, and this game in particular, pointing out that Jerry Palm has Utah State as one of the last four in the tournament right now. And we said this is like a game at the first four in Dayton where they have to win to advance to the tournament. And so far, Utah State is fulfilling that. Is it enough to keep them in if they go on to lose, say, against Boise State? That's a big question. But look, New Mexico's 50 in the net. They're a good team. And Ryan Odom has come out along with Taylor Funk, Stephen Ashworth. And they've got a double-digit lead late here. Ashworth plants three. Uh-uh, short. Udeze the rebound. Go time for the Lobos, and they need to go quickly. Udeze's fouled. I 
think it was Akin. Three minutes left. You know, stay on the theme that you mentioned. I think Utah State's in. If they hold on and win tonight, they would be 25 and 7. As mentioned, you know, their net is 22. If the season were truly to end right now and the selections committee would see them at 22 and not include them in the tournament, they would be the highest rated team ever by 11 spots to not make the tournament based off of their net ranking. So I think they're in. The details have to match the data. And for Utah State, they're lacking in that quad one category. But this is a really nice win against a team that's 50 in the net on a neutral floor. That qualifies as quad one, but by beating this team, they'll probably fall lower down to the mid-50s. Ah, uh, the net. Such an elusive thing sometimes, yes. right? Whatever happened in watching a team and saying, hey, they're a good team, I think they should be in the tournament. Bearstow fouled, bucket, free throws. I know older brother Cam still has his allegiance to New Mexico, but he's got to be pretty proud of his youngest brother. Sean Bearstow. And Bearstow is a warrior. He's, he's averaged over 36 minutes a game over the last two months of the season. It's a lot of minutes. He's one of those guys that doesn't get a lot of credit. And Ashworth gets a fair share, and rightfully so, Funk, Akin. But Bersco quietly goes about doing his job night in, night out, makes things easier for others. Mashburn misses. Bersco has the rebound. Approaching two minutes left, 13 point lead. Ashworth kicks. Shot clock down. Bearstow gets it off in time. Missed it. Tip foul. Dorius. And of course, the semifinals tomorrow night coming up. CBS Sports Network from the Mountain West. Road to the Final Four follows us. Thanks for staying up with us back in New York. A lot to talk about. All the tournaments just here in Las Vegas would make a really nice uh, show. But of course, uh, across the country, in the, in the Big Ten, in the SEC, in the ACC, the Big East, American, and in the Mountain West, the team in Utah State. It certainly looks tournament worthy. Udeze hits a free throw. And they'll get a chance tomorrow night to take on a quad one opponent on a neutral floor in Boise State. If, if they can keep this lead. Two minutes left to play. House against Ashworth. Missed the three, tip is out, Dent is in, layup, uh-uh, yes, it drops. Timeout, Lobos, the lead is 10. Not easy, but not impossible. Oh, but with the activity that, and the pressure that New Mexico can apply in the full court, I would expect to see them pressure 94 feet, do as good a job as they can of keeping the ball out of Ashworth's hands because when he brings it up against the pressure, they're able to flow into their offense easily. When one of the other ball handlers has had to bring it in, bring it up the floor, there hasn't been a smoothness to it. So look for New Mexico to really pressure, deny Ashworth the ball, maybe gamble if they don't get a quick turnover. It'll be interesting to see they, if they foul or if they play one more possession out defensively straight. J. 
Devin House You're on the bench right now. 11 points, 4 of 11 from the field. He's got four fouls. Funk. Ashworth spins out of trouble. Mashburn fouls him. Mashburn's got two. Frustrating night for Richard Patino. Ashworth, the best uh, free throw shooter in the conference. I have a feeling Ashworth's one of those kids growing up who was good at everything he did, whether it was ping pong or basketball, or football, or whatever he played. Well, he's got tremendous hand-eye coordination. And so many fans in particular say guys are athletic based off of how fast they can run or how high they can jump. You forget that balance, coordination, hand-eye coordination, those are all things that are tied into athleticism, and I don't think those get enough accolades or respect as far as attributes for athletes. Ashworth with the rebound, and he's bumped. Alec gets him, and Ashworth with his 20 points is going back to the line. He plays bigger than his size, if that's a thing. Yeah, for sure it is. He's not afraid of the moment. He's a competitor. He doesn't use his size or lack of size to be a detriment. He's willing to stick his nose in there. He's not afraid of contact. A lot of guards that are in high school or middle school that might still be watching this game, you can learn a lot from Stephen Ashworth. He was really good in the win over Boise State. Of course, that's who they face tomorrow night. He had 19 points, 8 assists, and no turnovers in 39 minutes. Mashburn. Ashworth with the steal. Funk with a toss. Atkin to Bearstow. Back to Atkin! Goodness! The that's worth a point. That's worth a few data points right there. House hits the three. Ashworth figures if they're not going to foul me, I'm just going to dribble this out. Shoga will wait. And Funk will dunk. New Mexico booing, but you have to get a shot off in that situation. Otherwise, the shot clock will be a violation. And New Mexico is not going to guard them. There is 25 on the shot clock, and I think Ashworth is just going to hold the ball at this point. And Udeze told him, don't shoot. I've never understood that. You play the game all the way to the end, you have to get a shot off. Otherwise, you take a turnover. Granted, it's a team one, but play the game to the end, even though you're not trying to show up the opponent. Shot clock violation. Lobos get the last touch. Utah State, Boise State tomorrow night. Andrew Cavallon, Steve Lapis, and A.J. Ross will have it for you here. House going hard. And Utah State, the three seed, the hottest team in the Mountain West stays hot. They've won six in a row, 25 and seven, 22 in the net. And on those team sheets, in that selection committee room, this win will help. Is it enough? It should be. Puts them at 25 and seven, as we mentioned. 22 in the net. Well, they're but in. I know they will sleep a lot easier <laughs> if they can knock off 2C Boise tomorrow, which should be a heck of a game. That's a great game. in San Diego State, San Jose State start things 9.30 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. And you Lobo fans out there, this is one of the biggest turnarounds in college basketball from last year to this year. This program is headed in the right direction.
terrific hire with Richard Pitino in year two. They started off 14 and 0, and I think, to be honest, some expectations got a little too much. But they've made tremendous strides. The future is bright once again in Albuquerque. Crowd from Logan and all over Utah. Travel a long way to this tournament, and they are having a great time right now. AJ Ross is with Taylor Funk, AJ. That's right, Taylor Funk, an impressive 32 points tonight. Everything inside, outside seemed to be just falling for you. At what point did you feel you were in the zone? Yeah, I mean, it's March, so, you know, anything can happen. Credit to this team, you know, find me at the right spot. Um, we played here a week ago, you know, so it kind of feels like home court. We had to get, we had a practice here, and, uh, you know, shots were falling inside and out, and, you know, couldn't be more proud of this team, uh, but we got more work to do. You talk about this team, I want to know Steven Ashworth also had an impressive game, but most of the shots were made off of some great assists, this ball movement, this unselfish play. When you all play like that, how hard are you to guard? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of just this team, though. You know, we're so unselfish. It could be anyone's night at any given time. Um, so, you know, it's just kind of Aggie basketball. We pride ourselves on being unselfish, and uh, we showed that tonight for sure. And, you know, you got to make shots at the end of the day, and we did that. A lot was also made about you guys needing to win tonight to hear your name possibly on Selection Sunday. Yeah. Um, what, how much was that on your mind? No, we, we let a couple games slip. We knew that, but, you know, that's basketball, especially this conference. Um, <laughs> they're funny for that. Um, this conference is tough. I mean, you see who wins, who loses, and, you know, there's just no off night in this, in this, um, in this league, and it's just fun. It's fun to play out here for sure. Congrats on a great win. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, AJ. Great day for you. Good luck tomorrow night in the semifinals. Taylor Funk drops 32 on New Mexico. Semifinals are set tomorrow night on CBS Sports Network. For Dan Dickow, AJ Ross, our entire crew, great day here and night in Las Vegas. A presentation of CBS Sports Network, 24-hour home of CBS Sports Back to Adam and the gang in New York. Good night from Las Vegas.